Hello everyone. Welcome to the Extensions 101 webinar series on the Zoho Finance Suite applications. So this series will span for five days in which we will be introducing you the components available in the developer platform for building extensions for any of the Zoho Finance Suite products. And then we will demonstrate you how we can use those components for building extensions for any of the Zoho Finance Suite products. I am Vinod and I am from the Zoho Marketplace team and I will be taking you through this webinar series. Along with me, we also have Lavanya, Nandita, Arun Vijay from the Zoho Marketplace team as well. And we also have Kishore from the Zoho Finance team. So at any point in time, if you have any queries to us, please post them in the chat window and we will pick up and address those issues, uh, those queries. So let's get started now. So we at Zoho have around, you know, seven different applications as listed over here to cater the finance and accounting related uh, you know, operations of any business. So of these seven uh, you know, uh, products, apart from the checkout and payroll, for the rest of these five products, we have a dedicated platform using which you can build extensions for each of these products. Okay. So uh, since, you know, uh, books will have all the fun functionalities um, that is available in, in the rest of the four products. I'll be, you know, uh, referring only to the Zoho books throughout this session. So let's get into uh, Zoho books and see what's available within the product Zoho books. So in Zoho books, you will have options to create, you know, estimates, quotations, you know, bills and invoices, which you can share with your customers and vendors. Then we have options to handle all our sales and, uh, you know, uh, other business, uh, like uh, we can handle all our payables and receivables in one place. Then we can integrate n number of payment gateways with our Zoho product so that you can facilitate, you know, customers and vendor payments from within the product itself. Then we have taxation. Um, say the Zoho product is actually equipped with all the taxation uh, rules that applies for, you know, almost all the regions around the globe. So whenever you, you know, create an account in Zoho books, you will be providing your region, right? So based on that region, the product will automatically capture your particular region and applies the taxation rules that applies for your particular region. In this way, you can handle all the taxation part of your business hassle free. Next, we also have options to create projects and tasks within that projects and all can be done within the, you know, uh, Zoho Pro books itself. The best part is you can even create reports for that particular projects and tasks, which you can share with your uh, clients or customers. Finally, we have inventory. So Zoho Books has equipped with options to handle your inventory uh, uh, as part of your business. So uh, these are the uh, this is the overview of the Zoho Books product. And these are the overall features that is available within the Zoho product. I mean, Zoho books. So when we have all these options intact, why do we need extensions? So to, to make you understand why we need extensions for a Zoho books product, I'll show you a few examples. So in this particular example, if you could see, we are actually creating an integration between Zoho Books with another Zoho product, which is Zoho People. So Zoho People is actually a HR management software, wherein 
we can find about the organization and the employee information along with the working hours information of every employee within that particular organization so from zoho people you can find you know employees information like to which department the employee has been associated with their daily check in and check out timings and the projects to which the employees are associated associated with so uh, while we have all this information in zoho people and let's say you want you are using zoho books as your accounting software and uh, while you you know uh, in uh, in talks or in negotiations with the client to grab a project at that time you would be you know required to share the manpower or the you know employee strength that you have in your organization right so you will explain your uh, the resources that are, that are available with your and you you will prove that you can finish the project on time so for that information we uh, are actually creating an integration between the zoho people and zoho books with which we can make the all the employee information that is available in zoho people we can make it available within this zoho books itself so the integration will facilitate a data transfer from zoho people to zoho books so that we will have all the employee related information within zoho books itself so with this information if you are in negotiation terms you can create estimates based on the manpower and you can send it to your clients in the same way when once the project has been completed you can have you know uh, the complete working time of all the employees you know uh, involved in the, in completing that project generate a report and then based on that you can create invoices and then share them with the client as well so with this integration it is actually facilitating us to get the employee information from another product and make it available within the zoho books itself and this integration can be built using the extensions so in this case let's say we are running an e-commerce website and we use zoho books as our accounting software now if we have any of the payment gateways integrated with our zoho books so whenever a customer makes some purchases or orders something from our site we can facilitate you know the uh, you know the uh, customers to make payments using any of the payment gateways right from within this zoho books itself so here once the uh, payment has been done you will grab that information and then using the zoho books inbuilt feature you can generate invoice and share them with the customer so in this case we are actually pre, you know integrating multiple payment gateways with zoho books and that particular integrations can be done using extensions so these are some of our uh, you know examples wherein an integration would be required for the uh, zoho books product and those you know integrations can be built using extensions so with that said the first topic of our, uh, today's agenda will be on extensions then when we say that we can actually build extensions you would be looking for a platform available to build those extensions right so that comes the second part of our agenda which is zoho developer so zoho developer is an you know cloud platform that has a variety of platforms to build various kinds of applications for any of the zoho product once you use the zoho develop, developer and create an extension or any other application for a zoho product you will be looking for a place to to host that application right so that comes the third part which is zoho marketplace so zoho marketplace is an online business store wherein you can find a variety of ready to use applications which you can you know um, integrate with your uh, zoho product so once we know about the uh, extensions the platform for building extensions which is zoho developer and the place where we can host those uh, applications that is zoho marketplace 
we will show you the platform wherein we can actually create an extension and we will brief you on the components available within that platform to add you know customizations or automations required for a particular extension okay so extensions are installable plugins or software add-ons that can enhance the existing functionality of any soho product and not just that you can use extensions to create an integration between a Zoho product and another Zoho product or a third party application, wherein you can facilitate a seamless data transfer in a secure way. So the best part that comes with an extension is that you will have a complete control over the design of the extension and the way it should connect with your uh, Zoho, uh, Zoho product. Okay, so you know once we uh, build our extensions, we can make those extensions available to users in two different ways. The one is private extension, and the other one is public extension. So in terms of uh, private extension, you will be provided with a private installation URL. So for any user, you are willing to use your extension you can share that you know uh, private installation url using which the user can install your extension and start using it most of the times the private uh, extensions will be used within a particular organization and on the other hand we have public extensions so when you uh, want to you know publish your extension as a public extension you can make it available in the zoho marketplace so any uh, Zoho user who finds your extension useful in the Zoho marketplace can go ahead, install your extension and start using that. This is how the extension is going to be helpful. And these are the types of extensions that we can build. Next, we'll move on to the next section, which is the platform available for building these extensions. So I'm moving to the next one which is Zoho Developer. As I mentioned, a Zoho Developer is a cloud platform that has a variety of platforms to build various kinds of applications. So let's get into Zoho Developer and see what are the options available inside the Zoho Developer. So as we could see over here, we have five different platforms available within the Zoho Developer. So each of this platform is meant to build a specific type of application. And based on your requirements, you can pick any one of this platform and start building your application. So for our session today, our focus is on building extensions, right? So in order to build extensions, we have the platform called Sigma. So Sigma is exclusively meant for building extensions for any of our Zoho product. So we, we are going to use the Sigma platform and build extension for our Zoho Books product, okay? And as I mentioned, once we build an extension using this Sigma platform, and uh, if you want to make it available as a public extension, I mentioned that you can make, you know, publish it in Zoho Marketplace, right? So let's get into Zoho Marketplace and see how the extensions are being hosted within that. So let me go back to the presentation. And from here, I'll get, I'll get into Zoho Marketplace now. As we get into Zoho Marketplace, you could see that we have different types of applications listed on top of the uh, Zoho Marketplace. Since our focus is on extensions, Let's explore what's available within extensions. So as we hover over extensions, you can see that all these Zoho products are categorized based on their business category and listed over here. If we get into any of the product, let's say I'm getting into books. So you can see that all the extensions that are built specifically for Zoho books are listed listed here so any user 
who is looking for an extension for Zoho Books can come directly into the Zoho Books category and look for the extension that he's looking for. The user can even more refine their search by selecting one of the you know business categories available over here. So as you can see over here, so all the extensions that meets the you know uh, finance as finance business category are listed over here. So the user can uh, you know who finds any of these extensions useful for him can go ahead and start using them. And in the left panel we could see something called price over here. So this is the, uh, an interesting part for you know VV developers. While you know uh, while you publish an extension in Zoho Marketplace, you can make that particular extension as a paid one as well. So once you publish uh, a paid extension, and whenever a user purchases that extension and start using that, whatever the revenue that the extension generates will be given to the developer. So this is how uh, you know we uh, create an ecosystem for the developer, the user, and the uh, product. So by now we have seen what extensions are and how they are use, uh, helpful, the platform available for building extensions and the place where we can post our extensions. So now let's go ahead and start creating an extension for Zoho Books and we'll see what are the components that are available within the you know uh, books developer platform which we can use to build our extensions so for that as i mentioned i am getting into zoho developer and from there i am getting into the sigma platform so once i click on start building you can see that i have been taken into my sigma workspace so if you are accessing Sigma for the first time, you will be asked to create a new workspace. So once you create your workspace, you will be taken into that workspace wherein you can build extensions for any of the Zoho product. Since I have already created my workspace and have created a few extensions as listed over here, I have been taken directly into my workspace. So in order to create a new extension, Let's go ahead and click on the button new extension. So here we should be providing a name and the description for our extension. So uh, the description is going to be a quick overview of what the extension is going to do. then under services you can see all the you know finance suit applications like books invoice inventory billing and zoho expenses are listed along with the other zoho products so for now i am going with the zoho books service so once we choose the service and uh, we read and agree to the terms and conditions then we need to click on create you could see that the extension is getting created now. So we can see that the extension has been successfully created and listed under the all extension section. So in order to add the uh, components necessary for our extension, let's, let's hover over the extension and click on this edit icon. So once we click on that, we could see that we have been taken into the Zoho Books Developer Portal. As we get into the Zoho Books Developer Portal, the first section we will be seeing is the Learn section. So here you could see a list of you know options available by default. So while building your extension, if you feel any of this option is suitable for your extension, you can directly click on Setup now and you will be taken to that particular space. Instead, if you don't find any of the options listed over here suitable for you, you can directly jump into the build section, wherein you can find all the components that are available 
to you know uh, to add customizations and automations for your extension are available in the left panel of this uh, section okay so let's go ahead and see each of the component one by one so the first one we have is preferences under preferences you will see all the modules available in the zoho books are listed as listed within the zoho books itself whenever you want to add some customizations to any of this module you can just click on that module get into that and add the customizations so uh, you know based on the module that we select uh, say for example now i am in accountant uh, module here we could see we can add you know journal custom fields and chart of accounts custom fields and uh, if we get into custom vendors we could see that we have options to add custom fields custom buttons and custom relates so in this way for each and every module available in this panel you will have different types of uh, options based on that particular module so uh, whenever you are intended to add any of the uh, any of a customization to any of this particular module available over here you can just jump in use any of the features available over here and add your customizations we have pdf templates in the left panel i'm just clicking on uh, pdf templates option so here we could see that there are multiple modules for which we can create you know uh, pdf templates in books most of our uh, operations will be handling pdf documents right so we will be creating estimates we will be creating bills or invoices we will be creating credit notes so for for each of these operations we will be having different types of pdf documents so using this section you can create customized pdf templates for each of this particular module once you create customized modules over here and publish them it will be avail made available within the zoho books product and whenever you tend to use those uh, pdfs you can just uh, you know uh, pick the uh, required pdf and start using that in your uh, zoho books product next we have email notifications so just like the you know pdf templates we can also create email notification templates using the email notifications uh, uh, component available in the left panel so as you can see over here we have multiple modules or we have multiple uh, operations listed in the uh, in this panel so say for example if you want to uh, send an email along with an email uh, along with an invoice or an estimate being sent you can go ahead and create an email notification uh, over here so with this you can have multiple email templates created for every module uh, so based on the business requirement and the business scenario you can choose one uh, one among the email templates that you have created and just you know uh, go ahead and send that email next we have automation component available in the left panel so under automation we could see there are three different components one is workflow rules next is workflow actions then we have schedules we shall see uh, all these components one by one first we have workflow rules say uh whenever you want to automate a process within the zoho product you can go ahead define that automation using the workflow rules for example uh if you are sending an estimate or invoice to a customer and in the same time you want to send an email notification to the customer regarding the invoice you can define that particular action using the workflow rules so here you can you will create you no know, uh, a custom action that is triggering an email and you will define a rule for that 
uh, action to be triggered. So in order to you know uh, trigger an action, we should accompany the workflow actions to this workflow rules. So let's get into workflow actions and see the options available within the workflow actions. So as you can see over here, we can create five different workflow or actions which we can accompany as part of the workflow rules. So based on your business requirement or business scenario, you can pick one of these choice and you know create your uh, customization. So first we have email alerts. So as I mentioned, if you want to send an email automatically, you can create an email alert as a custom uh, workflow action over here and associate that with the workflow rule. So whenever the, uh, the workflow rule gets triggered, an email will be sent by default. In the same way, you can customize to have in-app notifications as well, which with which you are gonna notify the uh, uh, about any changes or any information to your organization members. In the same way, you can you, you can choose to update any fields available within a module based on a particular action that is being happened within the Zoho books. Based on your requirement, basically based on your requirements. You can choose whatever the workflow action to be added, create one act, workflow action and get it associated with the workflow rules. Next, we have schedules. Um, with this, you know, schedules uh, option, you can configure to send notifications to users at regular intervals of time. Uh, for example, if you want to promote your product to your users at regular intervals of time, you can create a schedule using the scheduler uh, section so that it will automatically trigger emails to your customers at the defined uh, intervals. Okay, so all these automations can be done using the automation component that is available within the automation and, uh, component. And uh, next we have signals. Uh, this feature allows you to create in app no you know uh, notifications say for example you have you have integrated a third party service with zoho books so in this case whenever an event or change occurs in that third party service and you want to get notified on that particular change you can go ahead configure this signals option uh, for example uh, you have a service for contact management so whenever a change is being happened to a contact or a new contact is being added, the signal switcher will automatically notify within the Zoho books itself that a new change has been made to the contact in the third party service. Okay. Next we have widgets. So we all know that widgets help us to create customizable UI components which we can make available within the Zoho product. So in Zoho, we have you know, uh, an in-house development environment called Zoho Extension Toolkit, which allows you to create you know, customized widgets of your choice. So once we use that widgets and create our uh, widget, using the widget option available over here, you can embed that widget with our Zoho product. So we will be, you know, uh, uh, covering more about the widget section in our upcoming sessions. Okay. Next, we have incoming webhooks. So incoming webhook is going to be similar like signals. So uh, when we configure an, in, uh, you know, incoming webhooks, this has to be configured in a third-party uh, service. Okay. So whenever uh, an event is occurring in the third-party service some data will be modified or some data will be added in the third party service so this in you know incoming webhook will identify the you know change of the event and whatever the data that is being changed or being available will be made available within the zoho books using this incoming webhooks concept so in signals we will only be notified about the change that is happening but in incoming webhooks we can get that particular information and make it available within the Zoho books itself. For example, 
if uh, i mentioned about the contact management right say for example if there is some uh, changes happening to a contact and you want that change to be you know captured in zoho books as well so incoming uh, web cooks option is going to be helpful in that case okay next we have connections so this component is a very important component for any extension that you you gonna build not just for zoho books for any other uh, zoho product okay so for each and every extension that you will be building you will definitely need a connection to be added as part of that particular extension so what base uh, connection does basically is it will create a secured communication either within the product that is within zoho books or it will create you know a, a communication between zoho books and any other uh, product on the other end so uh, when we uh, talk about connections we have two different types of connections that is predefined connections and custom connections so when we get into predefined connections so you could see that we have already you know uh, configured the connections for uh, some of our frequently used third party services so if you are intended to build any integration between zoho books and the service and a, and a service listed over here you can directly get into that service just click on create connection and your connection will be established between zoho books and that particular service instead if you don't find the you know the intended service available in this list you can just use the custom services option you know provide the necessary configurations for the connection create the service and then use that connection to get connected with this uh, extension so these are the two types of connections available uh, to create a connection for our extension then we have custom views so in custom views you can you know filter the um, uh, you know information available within any module by specifying a particular category or a field uh, say for example uh, in invoices module you can create a custom views based on the unpaid invoices so if we uh, get the custom view created in the name of unpaid invoices all the un unpaid invoices available in your zoho books will be picked and listed under the custom view so in this way you can create n number of custom views and based on your requirement you can choose to have that custom view uh, on uh, on requirement basis so these are the different types of uh, uh, you know components available under the build section to add customizations and automations to your extension in our uh, you know upcoming sessions of this particular series we will be using you know all the components that is available as part of the le left panel so we'll pick up and some uh, you know useful use cases and try to fit in all the components and uh, use them build an extension to achieve that particular use case so so far under the build section we have seen uh, the you know the uh, uh, options available to make uh, customizations within the modules itself right so for any uh, to in order to use any of this component you will have to pick a module and within that module you will be making some customizations but if in case you want to make some uh, customizations globally which can be accessed from any of the um, uh, you know any of the part in this zoho books we have the configure section okay so in the configure section we have two different options the first one is global fields uh, say for example uh, within a contact you contacts module you will be creating a contact and if you want any particular contact to be uh, contact information to be accessed across the product you can make that as a global field so that from any module within the zoho books you can access that particular information 
So for that, we will have to use the new field option available over here. Make it as a global field, and uh, and it will it can be accessed from any of the any space within the Zoho books. In the same way, you can create global widgets as well. Uh, for example. Uh, whenever uh, you know we are asking to uh, asking the user is uh, install the extension and while installing if we require to get some information like api keys or api tokens from the user we can create a customized global widget in which we will you know provide the options uh, for the user to you know input their api tokens and api keys so once we get that information we will process that authorize and allow the user to install the extension so in this way you can you know uh, use the global widgets and global fields as per your requirements next we have install actions so this section allows you to configure some customizations that should be happen on installing either installing or uninstalling your extension so, uh, for example, if uh, if you want to send a customized email on installing an extension, uh, it can be of anything like you are just notifying the user that uh, he is uh, he has just installed the extension, or you may wish to provide some additional information about the extension through email. So those customizations can be handled in the install actions of uh, actions section. So this customization can be done both for install and uninstall actions. So uh, these are the two components that is available under the configure section in order to create global fields or widgets and the install actions. So just to differentiate, I'm reiterating under the build section, you will have components specific to modules and fields. And under the configure section, you can add customizations which can be accessed globally. I mean, globally in the sense across the product. So next we have uh, test your extension op option. So using this uh, option, uh, whatever the customizations that you add to your extension can be tested within a sandbox environment before you go ahead and publish your extension. So in order to use this, let me create uh, you know um, let me quickly create an extension now with a simple use case so our use case is like um, i'm sending an invoice to to a customer with a due date so within the due date specified in the invoice uh, the customer should be making the payments if in case the customer fails to make the payment you know on or before the due date we define I have, you know, uh, some uh, percentage of the invoice amount as a late fee uh, since the customer is not making the payment on time. So this is going to be our case. So let's see what are the components required to achieve this uh, use case. First, I mentioned that we uh, uh, we are going to, you know, uh, add some percentage as a penalty, right? So we need to define what percentage it is. So for that, uh, we need to create a custom field within the invoices module, wherein we can define whatever the percentage we are going to levy as penalties. Okay, so this is the first step. Next, since uh, the information is going to be communicated within the product, I mentioned we need connections for communicating within the product and uh, for communicating between the products. So for so we need to create a connection, which is going to be the uh, second step of our use case. Next, we need a logic which should automatically calculate, you know, based on the percentage we provide and the invoice amount, it should calculate what will be the penalty fee, right? So we need a logic to be handled for this. Finally, we need an automation which should trigger all these events so uh, whenever the condition satisfies the condition here is uh, you know the payment is not made on, uh, not uh, made uh, on or before the due date okay 
so uh, while i was explaining the components i mentioned that we can create custom fields uh, for any module so for the first case is creating a custom field and we can achieve that using the preferences section then i mentioned we need to create a connection for the data to be communicated within the product so use we can use the connection section and create the necessary uh, connection for our extension then i told that we need a logic to be handled to calculate the uh, uh, you know a penalty person penalty amount right so for, and for to achieve that we'll go with the custom flow actions option wherein we shall create a custom functions you know to calculate our uh, penalty amount finally all these requirements to happen automatically we shall define a workflow rule for our uh, use case okay so there are four different components to achieve our use case one is adding a custom field next adding a connection third one is adding the custom function and finally we are going to define a workflow rule let me go ahead and start implementing the use case first let me get into preferences and the invoice module and let me go ahead and create a new custom field so i am providing the name as late fee since uh, this is going to be a percentage i am going with the decimal option that is available over here you can either go with decimal or you can round it off and add it as a amount over there so i'm going with decimal option available here now i am making the you know uh, this particular field as mandatorily to be presented in all the invoices so i'm just uh, choosing s over here now it is showing us a preview so this is how our uh, custom field is going to be reflected in a zoho books product and once i click on save you could see that the custom field has been successfully created well, if we get into that particular custom field and in the end we could see that api field name has been automatically generated so whenever you are performing some logics to create a code for your extension and you want this custom field to be added as part of that logic you should be referring this custom field with this api field name only okay so the first step has been completed which is creating a custom field next i mentioned that we should be creating a connection right for that i am getting into the connection connection section and um i am choosing the default uh, uh, connections because so we can see the zoho book service is listed in the de default services just click on that click create connection button now it is asking us to provide a name for this connection uh you know uh, this name is what we are going to be used in our logic okay so make sure you provide a relevant name so the connection link name will be automatically generated okay uh while installing the extension if you want to you know get the uh, inputs or login credentials from the user you can keep this uh, option as a toggle to s if not if you want uh, the connection to auto auto authorize you can keep uh, this uh, use credentials of login user to uh, toggle to no okay for now i am keeping this as s then as part of the connection we should be defining this scopes scopes are nothing but we are you know communicating this connection that what are all the you know uh, uh, sections or the places this uh, extension will be accessing within the product so in our case we will be accessing the invoices module right so let's choose uh, you know search for invoice and as you can see there are multiple scopes i'm just going with all invoices in so zoho books dot invoices all so with this scope 
we uh, the connection can access all the information within the invoices module of zoho box so once we choose the scope just click on create and connect now the connection is you know uh, letting us know that it is gonna access some information within the zoho box just click on connect Again, it is asking us to you know uh, provide one more confirmation. Just click on connect again. Here you could see that the scope that we have provided is like uh, we need to access all the invoice related information, right? So it is the the scope that we have already present over here. The read, create, update, and delete invoices is going to be the scope uh, which this connection is going to be using. So just click accept. And you can see that the connection has been successfully created. Okay. So whenever you want to use this particular connection in your extension, you will be referring with the name uh, that we have provided for our connection. Okay. So with this, we have completed our second step that is creating a connection. Third one, we mentioned that we are going to create a custom function uh, within which we will be handling all our uh, logics to calculate our percentage, right? So for that, I'm getting into automation uh, component and I'm getting into workflow actions. Now, under the custom functions uh, section, I'm going to create a new custom function. So for that, I'm going on uh, to click the new custom uh, function button. Here, let's provide a relevant name for our function. If required, you can provide a description for this function for your free future reference. Then we need to define in which place this custom function is going to be triggered. In our case, we are going to trigger this function within the invoice module, right? So let's go ahead and choose the invoice module. Once we choose the module, you can see that the deluge uh, editor has been opened by default here we can create our logic that needs to calculate the percentage uh, for our demo purpose i have already created you know a, a custom uh, deluge uh, script i'm just copying that and pasting it over here so now we have created the logic uh, to calculate the percentage here if you could see as part of this code, we have included the custom field name. Uh, I mentioned that whenever we want to use the uh, custom field that we have created, we should be referring that the API name of that custom field. Then uh, to get the API name of our custom field, I'll go back to the preferences, go to invoice module and access the custom field that we have created. So here I'm just copying the uh, uh, API name of that particular uh, custom field. Go back to the custom functions. And here I'm just replacing the API name of the custom field that we have just created. So with this, uh, the, our first three steps are completed. <clears throat> We have come, you know, successfully created a custom field, established a connection, and uh, using those uh, custom fields and uh, connections, we have created our logic to be performed. Now we need to create an automation for that. We are using the workflow rules option. So let's go ahead and create a new work rule. For that, I'm clicking on new work rule button. And we shall provide a name for this uh, work rule. Again, we should define in which module this workflow workflow rule should be triggered. Uh, again, it is going to be the invoices module. And if required, you can provide a description for this workflow rule. Once we click on next. It is showing uh, when uh, the extension should trigger this workflow rule. In our case, 
it is event based that is if the payment is not uh, done on uh, on the due date in that event this workflow should be triggered okay so when when invoices it is created or edited now we need to you know define what the workflow should do so any field is updated so whenever um, the you know due date is not matched so in that case the uh, due date will lapse and there will be a change in the um, invoice field right so whenever it is getting edited or created the due date field is edited or created we need to trigger this workflow rule okay once we define that and click on next it is asking if we are add, you know uh, add some filter for this triggers in our case we are not going to have any filters for the triggers so i'm just proceeding with next and here we need to define the custom action that we have already configured so let's go with the, uh, the custom functions option and choose the custom function name that we have just created okay once we have added all the configurations and click on save we can see that the workflow rule has been successfully created so with this we have added all the necessary components to achieve our use case okay so let's go ahead and test if this extension is working properly for that as i mentioned you will let's use the test your extension uh, button As you can see we have been taken into a sandbox environment to test our extension okay so in our case we should be having a custom field within the invoice module right so let me get into the invoice module since this is the sandbox environment we will be we will not be having any data so let's go ahead and quickly create an invoice over here make the necessary uh, inputs and when we click on save and continue so you can see uh, the options to create an invoice has been added over here we'll just add a new customer i'll just go with the uh, mandatory fields first and just clicking on save so while creating the invoice itself we could see that the custom field that we have just added has been available as part of the invoice fields so the customization that we have added is you know available successfully so in this way whatever the customizations that you are gonna uh, add to your extension can be tested using this sandbox environment okay so now uh, let's get back to the uh, developer portal for that I'm closing the sandbox environment. And the final step is publishing this particular extension. So for that, we'll use the publish uh, section. And here, the extension that we have just created is ready, readily available to be published. So once we click on the publish button, it will show us all the customizations uh, that we have added as part of the uh, extension. Once we confirm all the customizations, we should be defining it as either the uh, this version is going to be a major or a minor one. In some cases, we will make, uh, make some very few changes and uh, republish the extension. In that case, you can go with the minor option. But uh, this is the first time I'm going to publish this extension. So I'm uh, retaining the major option over here. I'm providing some release notes and once i click on publish so it is again uh, you know provided with a private installation url and it is showing us all the extension components that i've added as part of our extension it has provided with the installation url and it is ready to be uh, published so before publishing it will be sent to uh, two reviews one is the zoho books uh, review 
and uh, if in case it, you are going to publish your extension as a public extension it will undergo another review which is going to be marketplace approval review first we will we'll, we'll need to send this uh, extension uh, for soho books review so for that i'm clicking on submit for private review and as you can see over here the extension details has been auto populated and it will be sent to the Zoho finance team for approval. So once I click on send mail, so the, the extension will be submitted to the Zoho finance team for approval process. So the so finance team will evaluate the extension, you know, uh, verify if all the standards are being followed uh, as per the Zoho standards and once it, it, it you know uh, we find the, the extension complaints with our standards the extension will be published so i'm just refreshing the page now it is in submitted for review status so here you can see that once the finance team has approved the extension the status has been changed to approved so in this stage the extension is ready to be used as a private extension okay so as I mentioned, for private extension, all you have to do is share the installation URL with the users whom you want to use that particular extension. So for that, uh, let's get, you know, we need to get into shared list option. And here you could see the private installation URL of the particular extension that we have just got approved. So if I click on share privately, it will ask us to provide the R guiding and the email address of that particular user. So once we provide these details and click share, the private installation URL will be shared to that particular user via email. So in this way, you can share the private extension to any of the users of your choice. On the other way, if you want to, you know, uh, make your extension available in Zoho Marketplace, we shall come back to the publish, uh, publish section. And here you could see an option called submit for marketplace review. So as I mentioned, if it has to be listed in Zoho Marketplace, it has to undergo another approval process, which is Zoho Marketplace approval. So if I click on that, You can see that we have been taken again back to the uh, uh, Sigma workspace, wherein uh, we have been provided with a submit to marketplace button for the latest version that we have got approved. Say, for example, if we have multiple versions uh, of the same extension, only the latest approved version will be sent to you know a marketplace approval. Okay, so if I click on this uh, submit to marketplace button, again, the extension will be, uh, you will be taken to the uh, Zoho marketplace partner console page, wherein you will be able to provide the extension details and submit your extension for uh, approval. Normally, the Zoho marketplace approval team will take around three to four weeks of time to evaluate your extension and uh, uh, once it passes all the standards, it will be listed in Zoho Marketplace. If the if the team uh, finds any violations or uh, uh, non-compliance with the standards, you will be communicated. And based on the uh, you know uh, changes that you made again, it will be evaluated uh, again, and it will be uh, published once the standards has been uh, successfully followed. Okay, so this is the process for publishing an extension as a public extension in Zoho Marketplace. So to add up, uh, for, for, those, uh, for those who all who have used, you know, uh, the multiple products available in the Zoho Finance Suite, you might be noticed that uh, every, uh, every product from the Zoho Finance Suite has some common features, right? For example, uh, sending estimates or invoices and all will be commonly available in Zoho Books, Zoho Invoice and Zoho Inventories as well. So if in case 
you have built an extension that can match all of these products you can go ahead just use this marketplace installation url uh, provide this particular url just by replacing the you know product name with the product to which you want to publish this extension so in the marketplace console of zoho marketplace page while providing the uh, extension details you will be asked to provide this installation url and and there just by replacing the product name you can provide the same url again uh, you know uh, submit your extension for marketplace approval then the marketplace approval team will again approve your extension and uh, make it available in zoho marketplace so uh, with this we have completed you know uh, the process of creating adding components testing and publishing an extension for zoho books in the same way we have a platform called all other uh, zoho finance suit products using which you can create you know uh, extensions for that particular products